Laboratory Activity 2 is about percent of a mixture. One of the main things this activity is about is to help you get some experience using a variety of laboratory equipment. This experiment follows the scientific method and you'll have a question that you're trying to answer. What is the percentage of salt and sand in a mixture of salt and sand? Now to come up with your hypothesis, you need to make an educated guess. You need to educate yourself before you make a guess as to what you think the answer to that question is. I have shown here the bag containing the mixture of salt and sand and if you read carefully, it says 25% salt and 75% sand. So what I did was I made a mixture by taking 25 grams of salt and mixing that with 75 grams of sand and that gave me a 25% salt, 75% sand mixture. So go ahead and write down what your hypothesis is. And obviously the best choice would be to say, I think we'll have 25% salt and 75% sand in this mixture. If you're doing this lab at home, you can make a different percent composition. But one thing you'll see in this experiment is just because your hypothesis seems obvious, you may have some errors in your experiment and it doesn't come out like you thought it might. Let's go ahead and do the experiment now and you'll need these materials including safety glasses and then your chemicals are your salt sand mixture and some warm water. You'll be recording your data in this table right here. So everything you'll be recording has to do with the balance using the digital balance to measure masses. Let's start by measuring the mass of the beaker. We'll be using the beaker to put our sand and salt mixture into. And we could have zeroed this out, but just to help us understand how to subtract out a measurement, we'll just go ahead and write this down, 57.37 grams, and write all of that out. Don't round it up to 57.4 grams. You lose accuracy if you do that, so use all the decimal places that are there and record that number, 57.37 grams. Next, you'll use your spatula and you'll weigh between two and three grams of your mixture and you'll put that into the beaker. It doesn't have to be exactly two or exactly three or exactly in between. You just need somewhere in that range is a good range to have. And then record your beaker plus mixture mass and here you can see that is 59.43 grams. Record that in your activity book and make sure you're making these recordings. Don't just sit here and watch this video lab. That's not what you're supposed to do here. This is not a spectator sport. You're supposed to be actively involved, writing things down, and then you'll be making some calculations on your results later. Next, you need the mass of your evaporating dish and make sure it's clean. If it's not clean, you need to wash it and then dry it and make sure it's dry and so you'll want to heat it with a Bunsen burner for a little bit if you did wash it. Any extra water from washing could cause an error in the experiment. As long as your evaporating dish is clean and dry, weigh it and here this one's mass is 38.18 grams. You also need the mass of the watch glass and make sure that's also dry and clean before you weigh it. Record this value in your workbook and you need the mass of the filter paper so record this number 0 0.98 grams make sure you record it in the right place where it says mass of filter paper in your procedure after that you have all the masses that you need to begin the experiment well in order to determine the percentage of salt and sand in a mixture we need to get the actual masses of the salt and the sand so we need to separate the salt and the sand and one way we can do that is by dissolving, adding some water and dissolving that salt. The sand won't dissolve in water, but the salt will, so we can dissolve it, filter it away, and separate it out. So you'll need to get your filter paper, fold it in half, fold it in half again, and take one, two, three of the edges and pull them to one side, and then this area right here is where you'll put your salt and sand mixture. First though, wet down the filter paper with a little bit of water and that helps it stick to a plastic funnel or glass funnel whichever you're using and make this setup like I have here with the iron ring and the ring stand clay triangle funnel with filter paper in it and then look at the evaporating dish and notice right here I have 
the end of the funnel touching the edge of the evaporating dish and that's going to be important once water starts pouring through here. Water is sticky. It likes to stick to different substances. Sometimes it's repelled. Sometimes it's attracted. It's attracted to ceramic or clay like material like the evaporating dish is made out of and once it starts filtering through it will contact that clay and it basically helps pull it through the filter when that water droplet is connected basically between the funnel and the evaporating dish so make sure that end of the funnel touches the evaporating dish to help pull that water through the filter paper. So now you want to take that salt and sand mixture, that dry mixture, and just pour it into the filter paper. Then get some warm water and I have a infrared thermometer here and you can use that to measure surface temperatures and I'm pointing it at that water in the beaker right here and it's saying that it's 41.6 degrees Celsius which is about 107 degrees Fahrenheit so that's plenty warm. The reason you use warm water as opposed to cold water is because substances usually dissolve faster the warmer the water is. So what you can do is put four five milliliter portions of warm water pour those into the filter paper let one five mil portion filter through then pour another five mil portion in and then do that two more times for a total of four times and by then hopefully you have all the salt dissolved and filtered through and separated out so you'll have end up with salt water in your evaporating dish and just sand inside the filter paper. So after you've poured the warm water through and let the water filter through as much as possible you'll notice the water, the salt water, collected in the bottom of the evaporating dish and you shouldn't see any standing water inside the filter paper. When you're satisfied that most of the water has filtered through, then go ahead and take the clay triangle and the funnel and filter paper, remove those, set those to the side, and then get ready for the next step which involves evaporating the water. And you'll be using your Bunsen burner and what I like to do is go ahead and get the iron ring height above the Bunsen burner adjusted first. And the butane Bunsen burners that I use, they are best operated when they're on maximum flow rate so I just turn turn the nozzle on and I adjust the heat by raising and lowering the iron ring. So you always want to start out by heating something slowly. And so I set up the iron ring and the wire gauze so the tip of the Bunsen burner flame just touches that wire gauze. And maybe you didn't know this but the darker blue section of the flame all of this through here that's the hottest part of the flame this lighter blue section inside right there and along the edges there that's actually the cooler portion of the flame so get your height adjusted then you can turn the Bunsen burner off and set your evaporating dish and watch glass on top of the evaporating dish because the salt water is going to start boiling and it will splash and so you want to keep it from splashing out or you're going to lose salt and then you will get an error on your salt reading. Then take the filter paper out of the funnel and unfold it and you'll have the sand in the middle of that. Lay this on top of the evaporating dish. And here's a little bit different view with the evaporating dish. Watch glass and then filter paper and sand on top of it. All raised up very high. The tip of the burner flame and you can hardly even see the burner flame just because of the light that was in the room when I took the picture but the tip of the burner flame just barely touching the bottom of that wire gauze. Let that evaporating dish warm up slowly for about two minutes. Then you'll want to start heating the evaporating dish strongly and you'll just lower that evaporating dish down unscrew the iron ring and notice what I have there I'm just taking a piece of paper towel I fold that up and just use that as a hot pad and just be ready for that that iron ring can get really hot and with two hands notice I'm using two hands there with two hands unscrew it and lower it down and I would lower it two to three inches into that flame. 
And after you low it down, keep an eye on that filter paper because the edges of it could start burning a little bit and you'll lose mass of the filter paper and get an error in your recording if you burn it too much. So just move it around. If one edge looks like it's getting a little brown, move the filter paper or, and adjust it so that that stops occurring. Take a spatula and spread the sand out and that will help it dry faster. And it's going to dry first. It's going to take longer for that salt water mixture to all evaporate off. But once it looks like the filter paper and sand is dry, then go ahead and remove it. And then you can immediately weigh that. And you can see this weighed 2.52 grams with the filter paper and the sand. And record that mass in your workbook. And so now you just need to keep waiting until that salt water, all the water evaporates from that mixture. Sometimes you'll see along that lip, that bent lip of the evaporating dish, it may look like smoke is coming out, but that's just steam that's being released as that water in there boils. One thing that may happen to you is you'll get this water that just collects right on top in the middle of the evaporating dish and it doesn't seem like it ever wants to go away. Well, one thing you can do is take your crucible tongs and carefully lift the edge of that watch glass up and it'll make that water slide to the side and drain down the evaporating dish. Now in this experiment, after about 10 minutes, most of the water had evaporated off and it'll start making some loud noises. You may want to just stand back just in case something does crack, but you'll hear popping, cracking sounds as the salt gets thicker and, and thicker. The water is trying to escape and it'll make popping noises as it breaks that salt. But eventually that sound will stop. And once that happens, then wait about five minutes more. And after 15 minutes in this experiment here, I stopped. I was satisfied by that time that most of the water had been evaporated off. I let the evaporating dish cool for a few minutes, but it still, it takes a long time for the heat to be released. But if you have a digital balance with a stainless steel top, you can go ahead and put the evaporating dish on, even if it's too hot to pick up with your hands. So you can use the crucible tongs, just put them underneath. Carefully place the evaporating dish, watch glass and salt on the balance. And record the mass, 67.57 grams in this case and then you're finished with the experiment. Go ahead and let it cool off before you try to clean up anything and all you have, it may look like a mess, but it's just dried, dried up salt and so you just rinse it off with water and your watch glass and evaporating dish will clean up quite easily. So make sure you have these values recorded. If you're just following along with the video lab, if you're doing this on your own, then you will of course have different numbers than I do. But in either case, make sure your numbers are recorded in your workbook and you'll use that data to calculate your results. So go ahead and pause the lesson and try to answer these questions one through five in your results. And you can also try to answer your discussion questions too. But this is the part where you need to put in some effort and try to figure out what these results are and what you're going to say in the discussion. Now, just one note in the discussion, one thing I want you to do on determining if your hypothesis was correct or not is to use something called percent error. And percent error, just write this down here, that's equal to your actual value minus your observed value divided by the actual value and then times 100%. Scientists like to have a percent error less than 5% on an experiment. If they have more than that, they say their hypothesis is incorrect. So consider that. Calculate some percent errors when you try to determine whether your hypothesis was correct or not. So go ahead and pause the lesson now and calculate your results and answer your discussion questions. Okay, well for the results, the mass of the mixture was just found by doing 59.43 minus the beaker mass of 57.37, so you get 2.06 grams for that. 
The mass of the salt was found by taking the evaporating dish, salt, and watch glass mass of 67.57, subtracting from that the watch glass and the evaporating dish, which gives 0 0.40 grams. The mass of the sand was just the sand plus filter paper minus the filter paper, which is 1.54 grams. Now, to figure out the percentage of salt and sand, what you do is just do part divided by the whole. So you had 0.4 grams of salt divided by the total mixture, is 2.06. That number times 100% gives 19.4%. And just remember, it was supposed to be 25%. And then the percentage of sand is calculated in a similar way. The mass of the sand by itself divided by the total times 100 is 74.8%. The actual, remember, that was supposed to be 75%. So that number is very close to what the actual is. The salt, though, seems like it's a little bit off. Well, let's continue with the discussion. And we always want to know whether our hypothesis was correct, why or why not. List some sources of error and then consider some other questions that might be answered that are similar to the experiment we just did. So to figure out if the hypothesis was correct or not, we can calculate percent error, and that's just the actual, for the salt, actual of 25 minus the observed value. That means what we calculated, what we observed, is 19.4% divided by 25 and times 100. That gives 22.4% error. The sand, however, we did really good on that. We had 0.27% error. So the cutoff, like we said, was 5%. Scientists like to see 5% error or less on an experiment to say that the hypothesis was correct. So since we only got part of it correct, we'd say no, our hypothesis was not correct. Well, it's not correct if you said that it was 25% salt and 75% sand if you said that's what it was going to be. And that's what I expected it to be because I measured the salt and the sand. And I believe I made those measurements accurately. So that 22.4% error, that error occurred somewhere in the experiment. And that's just something that you're going to learn as you do chemistry and as you follow the scientific method is there's always error involved of some kind. And that's because humans are just subject to error that when anytime people are involved, it's not going to be perfect. We can get close to perfect. But science reminds us of our need for a savior, that we aren't perfect, but Christ is. And doing science helps us remain humble and know that there's a God who is perfect and who has a perfect plan, but he doesn't reveal all knowledge to us. So that's why we have errors. So now let's list some sources of error, and one error could be that not all of the salt was dissolved, so some of it was left in with the sand, which gave a false low reading on the amount of salt. And then another source of error is water on the watch glass or evaporating dish or both initially. And just in a, as an example of what might happen there, let's say, for example, the evaporating dish and watch glass together weighed 50 grams. And let's say the watch glass, evaporating dish, and salt mixture weighed 50.4 grams. Well, the difference there is 0.4. But let's say we had an initial mass of 50 grams just for the watch glass and evaporating dish, and we didn't know there was water on there, so when we heated it up, half a gram of water went away, and it was actually 49.5 grams. But our final reading was 50.4. So... On the first example, our salt mixture would weigh 0.4 grams. In our second example, our salt weighs 0.9 grams. But we didn't know we had half a gram of water, so we, we never knew. Just pretend like you never knew that number was there. You didn't know that half a gram went away. What you wrote down was that initial mass that you had on the balance of 50 grams. And so that final result of 50.4, you use that to figure out your salt. But what ends up happening is it gives you a false low reading for your amount of salt. 
So that's probably what happened here is we had water on the watch glass of the evaporating dish initially, which gave us a false low reading on our mass of salt. And then we could have had some loss of salt by splattering as well, but I was pretty careful in the experiment not to get salt anywhere. And if any did get removed from the evaporating dish, I don't think it was enough to make a 22.4% error. So probably what happened here was water on the watch glass or evaporating dish initially. And so the last part here, thinking of some other questions that could be answered by conducting a science experiment. I have two listed here, and yours don't have to be like mine. Yours can be similar ideas, but they don't have to be the exact same thing here. There's a variety of questions. One I had was, what are other methods for separating salt and sand? Is there something else we could do besides dissolving the salt and filtering it out? And then what is the percentage of salt and sand at the beach? at an ocean beach. You could just measure, collect some sand down there and perform an experiment similar to what we just did and determine the percentage of salt and sand at the beach. Okay, well that's all for lab activity number two.